Chances are, if you've googled fun co-op games to play with your friend, significant other, uncle, or were just lonely and wanted to see how talented you are with two controllers, you've probably heard of A Way Out. There's good reason for that. It is indeed a game that allows for co-op, and it's fun. I will be joined by Matt, who will be playing the loose cannon Leo. He's unpredictable and wild, he may just leave you at birth and never pay child support. I myself will be playing as the older, wiser Vincent, who has a much calmer, dad-like demeanour about him. He's the kind of guy who lays under his car with the garage door open on a Saturday morning, ready to fix your bike chain. He's also in prison for murder. Alright, so Matt's already established in the prison, having served 8 months of his 8 years. He knows who runs things, he knows where to get smuggled items, and he also knows which of the inmates will give you a blowy for a pack of biscuits. It's Matt. Matt will blow you for a pack of hobnobs. I, on the other hand, have literally just arrived, and I'm already trying to therapise one of my fellow inmates. I've never been to prison or anything, but I definitely don't think telling a fellow prisoner to stay strong while you're still in your civilian clothes is the smartest play. I wonder if I'll have to do the uh, bend over and cough, show my arsehole thing. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. Oh, I see you. I'm up top. I could spit on you at this point. Nah, get off it. Are you my neighbour? No way. Get dressed. What if I just refuse? Yeah, I'll just do my thing. Write a letter to your wife. Oh, the bitch was so good. I remember you, bitch. I really love you, bitch. After my first night on the cold, hard prison bed, and listening to Matt earn those biscuits all night long, I decided to make the most alpha play possible the next morning. I walk up to the pull-up bar, and just begin getting an unbelievable amount of gains at 8am. The rest of the prison comes to a standstill, and watches on with pure envy. Matt even comes to get in on the action himself, but instead gets involved in a little scrap with some bald guy. I, being a supportive neighbour, come over to help him out. Oh shit. Oh. 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 Quick time. Oh. You don't know you're messing with me. I'm a murderer. I used to beat up my wife like this. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Go I'm also that. quite intense, but not quite as bad as that. No, yeah, you got the wife beater with sleeves on, mate. Extra damage points you got there. What happens if I fail it? Oh. Oh <laughs> shit, John. Yeah, it does, right? That was easy. Slap you in your fucking face. <laughs> and again! After that scrap, I go to the gentleman's room as I feel a bit of a storm brewing, but I then remember it's just the brick of cocaine I slipped in there earlier. I wanted to make sure I had it with me so I could use it as leverage if ever it was needed. Now time for lunch, and it's like school all over again because literally no one is letting me sit at the table even if there's space. I can't be wrapped up in self-pity for too long though, as Matt gets attacked once again while he was just trying to get some milk. Jesus Christ, I don't know what the baldy's problem is, to attack a man twice before lunch is against every Christian bro code. A fight ensues in the kitchen, and we start throwing everything at them apart from the kitchen sink. Literally, pots, pans, trays, colanders, cleverly worded verbal insults, but nothing will take them down. You see, because Baldy and his mate couldn't beat us out in the yard in one-on-one -on -one combat, they've implored the chav tactic of bringing eight mates with them and a knife this time. Fortunately, a guard comes to save us, who gets stabbed instead. I bet his wife and kids are so happy to hear that their brave father gave his life to save two prisoners, one of which was a murderer. That will really help comfort them in that open casket funeral as they walk past and say their goodbyes to their loved one. It's been an absolutely wild day, as we're now in the infirmary and neither of us have even had lunch yet. On the bright side though, we do have a hot nurse looking after us and an actual bed to rest in. I even have a cosy stone blue blanket. Getting beaten up might be the best thing to happen to us today. Matt's character Leo though, clearly has ADHD as he can't even sit still and enjoy this mattress, which is doing his lower back a lot of good. All he wants to do is just steal this wooden chisel that he spotted is lying around in the other room. Yeah, mate, give us a handy. Oh yeah. Why are you going around to that side? You can call the nurse so she can give you a handy. <laughs> Yo, Matt! What? The nurse is coming at natural. Oh. Hey, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Take two. This time I hide behind the door. Thanks. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, George. Matt, oh, Matt, oh. what are you doing? Oh, Matt, what are you doing? That's the tool, fam. On the table, on the table. Oh, oh. Yeah. Chisel secured, but no hand job, so we're one for two here, but at least now we can put the foundations in for planning our escape. Did I mention that we were trying to escape? I mean, I thought it'd be obvious with the name of the game being A Way Out. I mean, much like Facial Freaks Volume 14, it's a descriptive title that leaves an open-ended question about how the job is actually done. Leo drops the chisel onto a roof before the most exciting part of the day, where we get a pat down so a real human being has to touch me. Next up, we have to find a way onto the roof and reclaim the chisel. We discuss this on a bench while sitting 10 feet apart, because we're just bros chilling, not homosexuals, even though Leo's sideburns are pretty cute. 
Anyway, we devise a plan to join PI as these bums just sweep tar on the exact roof where we need to go. Right, I'm ready, mate. Oh. <laughs> I'm just doing a wall sit, getting the quads ready. You I'm, know? Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I have to be here when the guards come back. All right, all right. let me you, do the wall sit. You've got better quads. Yeah, yeah, fam. All right, I got the chisel. He's there. He's not, he's not moving. You're good, you're good. He's coming back. Oh, he's, Matt, he's back. coming back. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh, shit. All right, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Matt, it's coming. Matt. No, he's taking ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's no, no, taking ages. He's everyone did right take now. ages. Ah. I can okay. give you the tool. There we go. Escape in prison with your friends is much better. Come on, let me sniff Back it up, back it up. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ah. Quickly. Oh. Go in. <laughs> oh shit! I just Did wanted to see what would happen. Yeah, I wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> After playing some enjoyable, family-friendly pranks on my boy, like letting an industrial fan spin while he's crawling through, slicing open his stomach, it was time to secure some white bed sheets. I know what you're all thinking, and no, we're not going to pretend to be ghosts from Scooby-Doo. We actually need them to climb down this long, intimidating shaft. Long, intimidating shaft is actually what my ex nicknamed my peen. She also called her dog a cat and said yes when she meant no. Laundry in prison must actually be pretty simple as it's mostly just neutral colours like white, grey and beige. You don't have to worry about things like your more vibrant colours spilling over onto the rest of the laundry. The plan here to secure these sheets is actually pretty simple. I hop into this laundry trolley, Matt covers me in white sheets, and the guard just pushes me along into the back room, not suspecting a thing despite the trolley being 190 pounds heavier than normal. We then pass the sheets through a vent, and voila, down the shaft we go. Yeah, mate. Told you would be right. Yeah. In a bit, mate. I'm just leaving you, you down here. I need help. You're on your own now, bitch. Oh, oh God, if only a really strong man was here. Oh, oh, what's that? You need a strong man? I have arrived. Oh, here he is. Your tier three Twitch sub has arrived. Oh. I'd mod for you any day. Once we get the sewers open, Matt makes a really irresponsible decision to jump in head first, absolutely ruining those whites I just washed for him last night. No amount of detergent is going to get out those stains. I can't believe him sometimes. I don't know why I'm talking about laundry so much. I don't even do that much laundry myself. My girlfriend does most of it. Not because I'm misogynistic or anything. We just take up pretty old fashioned gender stereotypes. She cooks, cleans and fakes her orgasms while I earn the money and hand out the occasional beating when she shows a bit too much ankle in public. Bitch. One oh. kicks it, imagine. Ah. Oh. Together. Can't oh. do it. Oh. <laughs> the most uncoordinated team you've ever seen. <laughs> it's too high, man. And nothing to climb on either. Use each other's backs. Yeah, yeah, we've got each other. George! Yeah? I'm going! No! <laughs> Oh, the rhythm, baby. Look at it, the oh. rhythm. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, you messed up the rhythm. Ah, oh, I messed up the No, George, don't go. Oh, no. sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Once we made it to the top, we realised we'd need a wrench to open up this grate. The only place you can get a wrench is the workshop. We join this cute little workshop class where prisoners get to express their creative side, or use it as an opportunity to brutally murder a fellow inmate with a dangerous object, so it's really just like jerking off a blind man in a dark room. I don't even know what that means. Matthew gets to work on finding a way to sneak out a wrench while I discover a newfound passion for carpentry. The way the wood feels as I'm slicing it, the smell of that fresh sawdust, and the satisfaction of taking something from nothing to a beautifully sculpted art piece. It's better than getting laid. Or I just haven't been laid for a long time and forgot what it feels like. We grab the wrench, but before we leave, Matt also begins to see the relaxing benefits of the workshop. Prison life maybe isn't that bad. We're in too deep at this point to the escape to really turn everything round for the better, so no, this isn't an inspirational story about how inmates saw the bad in their ways and decided to be better human beings. If anything, the things that we do later on just make us even worse humans. A few days on, and it's visitors day, so later that afternoon, friends and family of the inmates come to see their loved ones, which is honestly the main thing that keeps everyone in here from hanging off the top bunk, Jeffrey Epstein style. This includes Matt's missus, who's flatter than an ironing board, but hey, at least someone loves him enough to come see him, which is more than can be said for me. I made my wife an exact wooden recreation of my penis in that carpentry class and she doesn't even come to see me, because I murdered someone and apparently that's taking things too far. Wow, you never saw me complain when she forgot to do the dishes every once in a while, but now she has the audacity to say that we're done because I killed a man? SMH.
Anyway, tonight would be the night that we escape due to there being a thunderstorm about to go down. Don't know how they know the weather forecast in a prison, but let's not overthink it boys, let's go. We share a moment lost in each other's eyes before we're about to share a lifelong bond. Bros who escape prison together is actually the second strongest bro bond there has ever been. It's only second to bros who help their boys fap when they've sustained a hand injury. That's why me and Matt have the closest bond there is possible. We weave through the pipes of the prison, trying not to get caught, and this game really makes you feel the exaggerated swagger of an Anne Frank in Frankfurt 1945. We come across two guards playing poker, and I can't help but see what hands they've got as I enjoy a bit of gambling myself. I mention a lot in these videos that I enjoy gambling, but don't worry, I don't have a problem. I just enjoy the occasional bet on the footy or UFC, and then when I don't win, I keep betting until I win or run out of money. It's not a problem, I promise. Quick, grab right. my strong hand. Yo, spin the globe. Yeah, wherever it lands is where I'm going. Sailing the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, go, take him up. I'm just gonna strangle him for a bit longer. Hey, mate. You sure you haven't heard of someone before? You seem to be enjoying this, man. Hey, mate. I think Motherfucker won't go out, man. <laughs> I can't choke this bitch, man. He's got a neck like a tree trunk. Okay, I got it. Fucking run. Oh, God, God damn. Oh, Matthew, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just sent it. Woo. What do we do next? Go IB for and go chill out for a bit. Go Cancun and have a fucking sex on beach. Yeah, go Cancun. There we go, wall set. See how long you can earn that. We might be escaping from prison, but it's, it's good to get those exercises. Are you feeling the burn? It. Nah, not really, not really. Not really yet? No, it's alright, we'll leave it a bit longer. Lovely day out, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not the worst day I to mean, escape I mean, it's raining, prison. but like, no, there's nature. Can't really complain, really. Yeah, how are you doing on your wall oh, set? I'm starting to feel it a bit now, you know. Starting to, yeah, yeah, starting yeah, to. feeling it a bit now, yeah, yeah. and then like, nice little quads there, look. Quads and squads and, and what other quads words are there. Now I'm just going back to quad again. Speaking of quads, mine are fucking burning! Woo! <laughs> Do you know what? That was the exercise I needed. We may be escaping from prison, but I needed that. That's it. Stretch your muscles. Yeah. You're not going to pull anything now. Ah. Another wall set. I'm really feeling it. Ah. Yeah, alright. That's alright. I'll go quick now. Yeah. Ah, God, yeah. I can't do it as long as you. Get in the car! Get in the car! Yeah, I'm just a police officer. Now run him over. <laughs> X to go full go speed. Full speed? Yeah! Oh, oh the beast! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, let's go! Oh fuck! He crashed into the bus. Oh fuck! Matthew. Behind us, John. Baby, won't you hold my hand? Hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's too good. I'll do it next time. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Catch me! Alright, we'll actually catch you this time. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Starts playing Jewel of the Fates. <laughs> eh? What? Why are we all of a sudden in England? <laughs> <laughs> The next morning, the police force seems to have forgotten about us or something, as there's no one on our tail. I guess they have more important business to take care of, like arresting black teenagers for walking down the street. This allows a relaxing morning for me and Matt to bond with cute activities like shallow water fishing. Unfortunately, no one brought their wellies, so we're gonna have to get these prison trainers and slacks absolutely soaked through. It's also clear to see that Matt lacked a father figure growing up, as carrying a game of Overwatch as Anna comes more naturally to him than simply catching a fish. He does eventually succeed though, and I feel like a proud dad, even though he's three years older than me, so biologically that's impossible. After getting a surprisingly delightful breakfast of roasted trout down, we continue through the countryside until we come across this quaint little farmhouse which makes for the perfect place to try and steal a car. We have the option to just distract the elderly residents by releasing their horses or go on a full-on home invasion, and I think you know what we ended up doing. Yes, she is. Ah, oh, I could take her, mate. She's got a shotgun on the table! <laughs> Matt, stop her! Stop her! Stop her, Matt! Stop her, Matt! She's calling the police! Help! Honey, he's got me! Oh, shit! Yo, what's up, bitch? Oh, let's go. You're gonna pay for this! Careful, honey. Just calm down, you're gonna be fine. Are they gonna be okay? Ain't no one calling their fucking house. They have dinner with shotguns on the table. They're not getting checked on for at least a fortnight, and they're gonna be dead. What are you doing? Just trying yeah. on that, mate. You know that guy that was like fucking, what was it, 13 stone larger than me? I'm sure whack some of his clothes. Oh, they fit like a dream. Look at us. Weapons. 
weapons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're broke in their house and now we're just like eating their cookies and shit. I'm washing dishes for them! Oh, I love that sausage. What a dream, George. We live in our house together. Look at this. I'm cooking up a sausage. <laughs> Imagine what they're thinking right now in the cupboard and I'm just downstairs like fucking with their music. The banjo. Oh, extreme. I want extreme difficulty. Here we go. Oh, shit! <laughs> That was beautiful, we just made some absolutely unreal music. These poor old souls were probably terrified we were going to murder them and steal all their valuables, but no, we just wanted to create some art in the form of freestyle music. They'll also go downstairs to find their dishes done and sausages cooked. So all in all, I'd say they got off pretty easy here with just a mild case of PTSD. While we've got the time, we also go and say hi quickly to the farm animals as they'll probably be dead pretty soon. Damn, cooking that sausage hits a bit different when I think about how it was probably a pig about two weeks ago. We do eventually find a car in the barn, but it needs some serious work. Good thing we're both just a couple of alpha males and not women, so repairing this truck comes naturally to us. Alpha males are just naturally better at everything. Scuba diving, lifting in the gym, making derogatory comments, and sitting in the corner watching their wife take a BBC. So we fix up the truck and make our escape, where the police once again fail to catch us, even when we ditch the truck in favour of this wooden rowboat. Literally, this has been the shittest prison escape you can ever think of, but we're still somehow winging it. We have a little bro to bro moment and decide that we're going to ditch going to see our loved ones and instead go after this dude Harvey who we both apparently have beef with. A wise decision. If you'd like to see us try and take out Harvey Price, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new around here and you find yourself coming back. I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you as always to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I just want to give a massive shout out to my motherload void boys and above, Bjorn van den Hatter, the Gamer Tech, Xyphon Productions. Thank you guys for your support.